Liz Cheney is ousted from Republican leadership in the House. Maryland announces that it will no longer have mask mandates for outside. And we review stories that we reported on earlier this week between the Israel and Palestine crisis, as well as the U.S. gas crisis on the East Coast. These stories are more on your May 13th Not to News update. Please like and subscribe if you're looking for daily news content, and let's dive on in. Starting us off from AP News, GOP dumps defiant Trump critic Cheney from top House posts. Republicans dumped GOP Representative Liz Cheney from her House leadership post Wednesday for her uh, persistent repudiation of Donald Trump's election falsehoods, underscoring the House are underscoring the hold and defeated and twice impeached former president retains on his party. She defiantly insisted she'll keep trying to wrench the party away from him and his destructive lies. Meeting behind closed doors, GOP lawmakers need less than 20 minutes and a voice vote to oust the Wyoming congresswoman from her job as their number three House leader. The banishment urged by Trump and other top Republican showed his ability to upend the careers of antagonists, even those within the GOP party. Um, her replacement in the uh, party's House leadership is expected to be Representative Elise Stefanik from upstate New York, who entered the House in 2015 at age 30, then the youngest woman ever elected Congress. Stefanik owns a more moderate uh, voting record than Cheney, but has evolved into a vigorous Trump defender who echoed, echoed some of his claims about widespread election cheating. Some of Washington's hardest right conservatives have remained wary of Stefanik's moderate record, but no challenger has emerged. Representative uh, Ken Buck of Colorado said the vote on replacing Cheney will occur Friday. Notably, I think this is just kind of interesting to see how the Republican Party has been evolving in a post-Trump era. Um, I don't think we necessarily want to see these types of individuals uh, removed from the Republican Party. However, um, a part of being in leadership is representative, representing the mainstream uh, vote of the um, party. Um, I think also something we have to remember is that the big lie comment was actually started with McCarthy, who is on leadership. So this isn't necessarily a attack based on uh, Cheney's Trump views, but more just her consistent attacking of Trump in general, rather than just specifically with the 2020 election. Um, comments did come from uh, uh, Trump, um, where he gave the following remark. Liz Cheney is a bitter, horrible human being. I watched her yesterday and realized how bad she is for the Republican Party. She has no personality or anything good having to do with politics or our country. She is talking points for she is a talking point for Democrats, whether that means the border, the gas lines, inflation, or destroying our economy. She is a warmonger whose family stupidly pushed us into the never-ending Middle East disaster draining our wealth, and depleting our great military, the worst decision in our country's history. I look forward to soon to watching her as a paid contributor on CNN or MSDNC. Um, you know, always the best coming from the former president and his remarks of the modern Republican Party. Um, honestly, I think this is kind of expected. I don't think uh, Liz Cheney actually deserves to be in our Republican leadership role, as I don't think it's reasonable to say that she represents the mainstream views of the modern Republican Party, who does seem that it is still centered on Trump. I don't necessarily think that's the best way the Republican parties could do for trying to win 2022, 2024. Um, however, with stories that we're going to be looking at later, I don't think that the Democratic parties under Biden is doing the best at trying to make their case. Uh, specifically looking at Maryland and its response to COVID, Maryland lifting capacity restrictions on restaurant entertainment venues. Uh, Maryland Governor Larry Hogan announced Wednesday that restaurants and entertainment and sporting venues, which have been restricted to limited capacities for more than a year during the coronavirus pandemic, can resume normal operations on Saturday. The governor also said he plans to lift the state indoor mask mandate when 70% of residents have received at least one dose of the coronavirus vaccine, which Hogan said was expected to concur by Memorial Day. Our goal is to get back to normal by Memorial Day. He said more than 65% of state's residents have gotten at least one shot so far, according to the CDC. Um, the move, which um, will come as the number of coronavirus cases and hospitalizations continue to fall in the state, will make Maryland the first in a, the region to drop its capacity restrictions and indoor mask mandate. Hogan's executive order affects all businesses in the state. It will lift the 50% capacity restriction on restaurants that was put in place two months ago, allowing them to return to 100% capacity and do away with the six-foot social distancing requirement. Hogan said indoor and outdoor venues, which include conventions and all outdoor entertainments, arts, and sports venues, including ticketed events, will also be free of capacity restrictions beginning Saturday. Mass restrictions will remain in place until the vaccination threshold is reached. 
Um, the one thing I find kind of interesting is having this percent-based uh, condition for reopening the economy. Um, I don't honestly think I completely agree with this. Uh, my personal opinion is that once all vaccines have been made available and anyone that has wanted the to get the um, vaccine has had the opportunity to do so. I, I, I.e., like, let's say if there's a week uh, backlist, you know, you give it a week. Um, once everyone has been able to get that, I personally don't see any reason for not opening things up. Um, at that point, you know, why can we, let's just say, like, for whatever reason, we just flatline at 69% of the population is what gets vaccinated and no more. Um, why, why should the 69% be forced to not open up because of, you know, 31% that disagrees with getting, uh, vaccines um i don't think that that's a good way to run politics i don't think that's a good way to do policy um and i find it kind of interesting that you know that's how democracy is doing being done now that 30 percent can overrule the 70 percent coming from vice people aren't addicted to wearing masks they're traumatized uh this is coming as we look at these mask mandates there's a glaring omission from the discussion about why people can't quit pandemic behaviors the mental and emotional toll of the last year after what many have been through, death, grief, isolation, stress, anxiety, unemployment, trauma, people are going to have some feelings around the transitioning back to a less cautious way of life. This doesn't mean they reject the CDC guidelines or are wielding progressivism as a weapon. It means some people need a little extra time to put their mask away as they stroll around the park and they should take it. Especially since broadly speaking on a policy level, states are opening up and they have concrete plans to continue and do so in the coming months. If anyone is being overly cautious, it's happening on an individual level and unlike the individual individual choice to not get vaccinated it's an individual behavior that doesn't incur any meaningful risk to others an especially cruel element of being told you're not moving on fast enough is that all of the unusual ways of grieving were put on hold last year or severely truncated as the rest of vaccine america begins the summer of uh boncella rescheduling long-awaited dinner parties and medium-sized weddings the hardcore pandemic progressives are left cassandra like to preach over the pierce folly green wrote um so you know i do kind of agree with what vice is saying here that i do think it's up to individuals to decide whether they want to wear a mask or not uh what i don't agree with though is this perception that the idea is that people wearing masks are the ones being attacked um i know that the cdc has said that once you're vaccinated you're allowed to go outside without a mask um which would make it implied that as i walk around uh you know my neighborhood with my dog i should be allowed to you know not wear my mask you know without any hesitancy without any problem and i know when i'm walking my dog a ton of people give me side eye some people you know cross a street some people wait in the most obnoxious spots uh, making it very obvious that their issue is not that they have to wear a mask it's that they see someone else not wearing a mask this is not an individual problem this is your relationship to the community um and i think part of that is recognizing that other people are going to do actions that disagree with you um and honestly like i obviously i don't think there should be any legal requirement that you have to continue walking on the same side of the sidewalk as someone that's not wearing a mask but that seems very obvious to me that they're in the wrong uh, next, we're going to review a couple stories that we reported on earlier this week. We have an update on from ABC News regarding the violence between Israel and Hamas. The Israel Defense Force said on Twitter early Wednesday that Hamas and other militant groups had fired more than a thousand rockets into central and southern Israel over the past two days, targeting cities including Ashdod, Ashkelon, and uh, Ber Beersheba, and Tel Aviv, and the capital of Jerusalem. Sorry for butchering it names um in response the israeli defense force unleashed hundreds of airstrikes aimed at what it uh said were hamas and other terror targets in the gaza strip where two million palestinians have lived under a blockade imposed by neighboring israel and egypt since hamas took control of the 140 square mile territory in 2007 the civilian death toll has been increasing on both sides at least 53 people, including 14 children, three women, have been killed in the Gaza Strip since the violence escalated Monday. Another 320 have been wounded, including 86 children, 39 women. In Israel, six people, including women and children, have been killed by rocket fire, while 46 others have been injured, according to Israeli emergency services. So, essentially what we're saying is that the situation is just continuing to get worse, um, and I think this takes some type of strong international force to say that these individuals need to stop. This was the threat that was is being done um, under the Trump administration. Um, and I personally think that the lack of response coming out of the Biden administration um, is going to allow these type of tensions to continue to escalate. Um, and tensions have been escalating, you know, you know, forever in this area. Um, and there needs to be some type of threat to stop this type of violence. Uh, finally, we do an update on the Colonel Pipeline um, on the East Coast. Uh, pipeline 
pipeline operations uh, restarted about 5 p.m. Eastern time um, on Wednesday. Uh, the company said in the following statement, following this restart, it will take several days for the product delivery supply chain to return to normal. Some markets served by Kernel Pipeline may experience or continue to experience intermittent service interruptions during the startup period. Kernel will move as much gasoline, gasoline, diesel, and jet fuel as is safely possible and will continue to, continue to do so until markets return to normal, the company said. Kernel first announced it was the victim of a ransomware cyber attack last week, uh, prompting a shutdown of operations Wednesday. Um, the agency working group with the energy department serving as lead agency was assembled over the weekend and officials assessed multiple contingencies in the event of a prolonged shutdown and decreased fuel supplies nationwide. In a tweet Wednesday, Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm applauded the news writing, we just got off the phone with Colonel Pipeline CEO. They are restarting pipeline operations today at 5 p.m. More soon, President Biden previewed the decision and remarks Wednesday telling reporters that we have been very, very close contact with Colonel Pipeline, which is the one area you're talking about where... That's one of the reasons that gas, the prices are going up. And I think you're going to hear some good news in the next 24 hours, and I think we'll be getting that under control. Um, obviously, we won't be getting Biden's tweeting under control, but whatever. Um, big big things here. Uh, the major thing that I think is a good sign is that they are returning to normal with their operations. We would expect the pipeline to be back to normal um, within the next week or so. Um, the big concern I have is that there has no longer been the communications that cybersecurity needs to be an aspect of, you know, infrastructure that we care about. I am still tired that we're having conversations of infrastructure around um, things like childcare, around uh, maternity or paternity care. Those are not what we talk about when infrastructure. We're talking with infrastructure, we're talking about actual, like, structures we're talking about bridges we're talking about um airports we're talking about trains we're talking about transportation we're talking about protecting those aspects of transportation um i i i i'm just very frustrated with the conversations going on and you know the one thing that i've been saying is that if my tax dollars are expected to pay for those types of services i think it's reasonable to say that um some of that money in my tax dollars would go to protecting those resources as part of cybersecurity. And this is your May 13th Not to News Update. Once again, please like and subscribe if you're looking for daily news content and have a good one.